Connect 4, so I'm going to start by importing NumPy as NP. And looking at a Connect 4 board, we see that there's seven rows, sorry, seven columns and six rows. So I'm going to say board is equal to NP dot zeros. So zeros is where we haven't gone yet, six and seven. And let's do this as type. So it's a, I think it's D type equals int. And we should also make a list for legal moves. And how many are there? Well, there's six in each column. So let's do six times seven. And now we can start by saying our turn is equal to one. So turn one will be player one and negative one will be player two. I'll say while true, this is going to be our game loop here. And the first thing we should do is get our move. I'm going to write a function called accept move. And this is going to be written right up here. So I'll say define accept move. And the way this is going to work is we're going to need to make a while true. And in this while true, we'll say move is equal to the integer of the input. And we'll say f string of what is player. And then we'll need not turn, but we need, uh, I'll say proper turn. Proper turn, turn or move, I should say. And what this is going to be, we'll write proper turn up here. Proper turn, I'll say define proper turn as return one. If turn equals one, else just return two. And so that takes care of the negative one part of it. So that's move. Um, what we should do is check if move, oh, move should be coming in as one indexing, but we want to make it zero indexing. And then if we do that, we can check if move is in range seven because it needs to be within the columns. So, and it also needs to be, and it has to be legal. So legal moves, move does not equal zero here. Does not equal zero, does not equal zero. <laughs> Um, and if that's the case, then we should first change legal moves. So move and make this minus equal one. And then what else should we do? We should break out of this. We can best do that by actually saying return move. And otherwise, so otherwise right here, we would continue. And the other thing we should check for is in case that something put in here, uh, uh, the string put in there cannot be easily changed as an integer. So if you put in a floating point number or write something as an integer, uh, as a string, then we can also start this so i'll say accept value error and this will be continue so try and accept structure over here so the next thing we should do is find the proper row given how many things have been uh played in that row so let's do that by define row find row and this should be based on the column actually and so this will be return well let's slice out the part of the the column that we're looking at so like this however we want to flip this because we want to look at it from bottom up. And now we can say, well, where, so numpy.where, this is equal to zero. So that's where we haven't gone yet. However, anytime you use numpy.where, you need an index of zero and we want the first one and we want to flip it back. So it's five minus, run through this in your head and you guys will realize that this is how it works. And so find row needs to actually get the move, which is our column. Now we can add it to the board. So board equals, or sorry, board index of, let's do row move and that equals the current turn now the fun part if check move and let's give it our row and move and now uh print another f string uh player that's how you spell player player and then we should use proper turn again proper turn has one and then let's break okay let's write check move this one's the fun one so if sorry define check move and this is with every row and column. So what we need to do is we need to check every four length squares in this board to see if there's any win, but we should only just check the ones that are relevant based on the last move. So I could say for I in range zero, if a row is less than or equal to two, uh, else row minus three. Sorry, this should be less than or equal to three. And you guys can run through these and notice that this works out. And for the end in this for loop it's three if row is greater than or equal to two else row minus uh sorry row plus one now for j which is going to be our columns for j in range and this is zero if yep column is less than or equal to three else column minus three and then this is four if column is greater than or equal to three else column plus one now let's get the current slice so current board is equal to board and the slice is i i plus four and then j to j plus four 
Now we'll do this similarly to we how we did tic-tac-toe. So we'll say 4K in range 4. And then if sum of current board K, so this will check our rows, is equal to turn times 4. Or the sum of, let's check our columns now, current board of all the rows K is equal to turn times force. Um, all of, of course, we have to return true if this happens. Return true. Then we should also check our diagonals. So if the sum of NP dot diag of the current board is equal to turn times four, or let's check our anti-diagonal, or the sum of current, sorry, NP dot diag of the current board and then boom boom negative one so that's going to flip it so that'll give us our uh, anti-diagonal is turn times four then we can also return true great we've checked the move so now we can finish off here by let's also check to see if it's a tie if legal sorry sum of legal moves is equal to zero then we also have a tie so so print tie game that's two game <laughs> tie game and then break and then we should also make turn times equals negative one each time uh the last thing we should do is print out the board so we can actually play visually however i don't want to print out the board with the negative one so i'll say define proper print and this will be print the numpy dot where we'll use numpy dot where and we'll say where the board is equal to negative one. We want it to be two. Otherwise we want it to be the board. So that's our proper print. And where do we want to do this? Let's do it right after, right before we start the game loop. So not pop turn, proper print. And we should probably do it right here after we, so not print, but proper print after we assign another number. So let's run this and let's play this game. So what's player one's move? I'll say one player, this guy's gonna go over here. And I'll just make this a really bad game just to show you the mechanic. And player one is one.